A lot of people were saying uh, Oakland was kind of going in, uh, they were the favorite to win this tournament. Um, Shout out did you believe that, and did that change at all uh, once you started to play them? No, I, I think realistically they were the favorite. They had the best season on paper. If you look at their wins, they had some quality wins. They played a tough schedule. Uh, they uh, uh, scored goals in bunches if you look at the scores of their games, and they're, they're quite capable. Um, so, yeah, I think they're the favorite. But, um, you know, being the favorite doesn't mean you're going to win. And, and the, the game is played on the day. It's not played on paper. And today, uh, they were good at, for big chunks of the game, but they didn't score but one. And uh, we found big moments, and in the big moments, we, we rose to the occasion, scored three. Uh, if you score three, you usually win. So that's what happened today. You said a few weeks ago that uh, if you guys don't peak early, uh, you might have to pack it in early this year. Um, do you think this team has peaked, or do you think there's still some, some room to go there? Well, I think today showed that we still have room for improvement because we didn't put that game away when we should have. There was a chance to make the fourth and immediately going down the other end. And that's how soccer is. They got a penalty kick. Fortunately, Eve came through because that, that, that was the biggest moment of the game. We missed a breakaway. So immediately they get the emotion and the relief from that and they come right back down. I don't know what the call was because it was in the far corner. It looked a little suspect but they did get a penalty. And so the momentum, if he makes that change, it goes 3-2, anything could have happened. It would have been hard to hold on. And uh, so that was a, a big momentum saver for, for us, for Eve to come up on that. And uh, it, it, uh, that, it's big plays. And we made the most today, so, so we came out on top. And Eve's talked about, uh, you know, just a little moment ago, uh, he had seen a kid, or that same kid, take a PK in, in the earlier matchup with you guys. And he kind of knew what he was, uh, going to do. How big was that, that that Eves was able to read that, you know, and stay focused um, and, and get that huge save? Well, he, he probably won the game. We don't know but what would happen if it goes to 3-2, but uh, the goalkeepers are supposed to make big saves. Uh, he's come a long way under Andy, and Andy did a great job getting him ready for today. Uh, he's, he's improved, and as he's improved, the team's improved because their confidence in him has grown. And uh, they listen. He talks now. So, yeah, great save. Uh, saved the game probably. Uh, it was fun to watch, too, because he, he was emotional afterwards, and that was, that was uplifting for our guys because there was still a lot of time on the clock, and you still got to run. In, on a soft field and uh, in pouring rain, and the wind changed, so we played against the wind both both halves. So uh, it was uh, it was fun for me to watch and great for the guys. Coach, you guys are able to strike first with that, uh, that goal that of Nathan Brisbane. In the 21 second play, you give up the goal on the other end. Uh, what did you tell your team uh, going into the half? To, uh, well, I didn't talk about that because you know that's history, and you know there's no sense biting them anymore on that. But. Uh, that, that, that was a big play by Oakland, and that just tells you the quality they have in their side because we scored a great goal, and on the kickoff, they attack down the right side, and they find number seven right in front of the goal, and he, he makes an impossible angle shot, but he made it and, uh, because they're a quality side and they're fighters, and uh, they, wanted to, they wanted to win as bad as we did. Um, so uh, I was worried that that would be a momentum shift, uh, but I think we cooled down a little bit after and uh, we relaxed and we tried to play a little bit. But it was a difficult half. You know, you're playing against the win. You can't easily clear a ball when you need to. Uh, you know, any ball you put up high gets blown back into you. Uh, so you don't have that safety valve just to dump it long uh, because it's blown back in. And uh, so we didn't talk about that at half. What we talked about at half were uh, our right and left backs uh, not getting caught with the ball on the side and to try to find Brunsma even into his head, you know, so that we didn't get caught and maybe to play that ball down the line. And uh, the other thing we talked about, which we did really well today, was move the ball and be patient and go from left to right and right to left uh, through the back line. And you saw in the second half, McLean played Charlie, Charlie played Diego, back to Charlie, over to McLean, and we made them work a little bit and wore them out. So that was one of the bigger points at halftime, uh, being patient, moving the ball, uh, but obviously, don't foul and contain number 11. Don't, don't dive in on him because he's very strong. You're going to hit him, you're not even going to move him. He doesn't move. And uh, so just see if he can make a play. Don't give him a play. You mentioned, uh, my last question, you mentioned number 11, Cal Bethel. What was your game plan coming into this game? 
game to try to contain Cal Bethel? We, we try to get Winkleman to front him when he came from the back line, from our back line to receive the ball, and then Winkleman would front him a little bit in our little defensive triangle there with Hillary, Charlie, and Wink in front. And so Wink tried to screen, we call that screening, and he tried to screen him a little bit. And then the other thing we tried to do was take him to his left foot if possible, because he is a righty. And we said, don't foul him, don't try to foul him, just, just stay with him and contain him and make him do something great instead of giving him something. And I thought we did a really good job on him all day. And the second part of that was getting a second defender in there and the double team, obviously out of the midfield and from the, ret, the right side and the left side back came in and helped as well. So uh, we did, I thought we contained him pretty well. You suck with these teachers. Well, I, well, I said earlier as the as Eve progressed, our team progressed, you know, and it was a simultaneous thing. Um, Andy worked so hard with Eve. Uh, Eve is uh, very good uh, left to right laterally, and he's a great shot stopper. It's you know when you watch him run and you watch him kick the ball, you're kind of wondering. But between the pipes, and you saw it on the penalty kick, he is explosively quick. And, and so that was his base. That's where we started from. But all the other stuff was a little bit raw. We had, and Andy uh, kept training high balls, decision making, punching, catching. Uh, his hands were a little suspect early today uh, in a rough, difficult day. He didn't give up any long rebounds, everything. He kept right in front of him, that, and he covered it himself. Uh, his, uh, his drop kicks and throw distribution has improved. Uh, you know, and then he makes the save of the day. So it was, that was justice for him, you know, for the hard work that he's put in and the extra hours that he's put in. Uh, he gets to make a game saver. So really happy for Eve, and I'm happy that he's here. Um, you talked to Edmonds at uh, Drake about uh, his play. And ever since he's been a lot more productive, can you just talk a little bit about uh, the impact that's made on the offense as a whole? Yeah, after we played Oakland, uh, we had a little heart to heart at the end of the field because I was we were pretty depressed with how we ended the game for 35 minutes at Oakland it was zero zero and we had the better chances we had three breakaways and uh, didn't score they didn't really have anything and then we we uh, we made a, a real silly foul and we lost our mark on the service and they scored on the kickoff all right we dove in. Oh, no, someone tried to turn, lost the ball in the middle of the park, and then there was a penalty kick. So it's 2-0 in, what, 30 seconds of game time, maybe less than that, maybe 11 seconds of game time. And so we went from being 0-0 playing really well down 2-0, and then it was 3-0 at half. And I said after the game, I said, uh, uh, you know, don't you think we could play that team and win? And they said, yes. I said, well, not the way we played today. And, and we started talking about the things that had to improve. And one of the guys, Coach, why don't we play wide and serve balls to Broomsma? And I said, because he's been here four years, he has yet to score a goal with his head. <laughs> and they all looked at me, and it was all the newcomers. They're kind of like, we got this 6'4 guy that can jump. Why don't we play serve into him? I said, because he's never scored with his head. We've tried. He, doesn't, he can't even do it in practice. I said, Nate, am I right? And he said, yeah, I've never scored with my head. And I said, see? And then so the first one he scored with his head, he said, coach, huh? I got one. I said, well, I called you out and you, you, you proved me wrong. And then he just kept proving me wrong. And, but that's what you want. So I called him out on something that he should be able to do. It should be in his arsenal. It should be in his quiver of arrows. And it wasn't. And at the end of the year, I think he has five with his head. And uh, just fantastic. Uh, found someone that would serve it to him, or we did. And that was the Drake game. Drew, last chance. Be courageous. Go at people. You're the fastest guy in the field every game we play, and you never run by anyone. Now at the end of the season, he's running by people. So uh, he needed a little nudge as well. So sometimes you got to tell them like it is and see if they respond. And lucky for me, they both responded really well on the positive, and uh, they turned it up for us.